Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, got some pretty interesting stuff. First up, uh, this is shocking to me, is that PayPal reaches 85% of Binance US volume in the first month. And in real actuality, it's not even the first month. It's been like a couple of days also. One of the founders of the world's largest hedge fund came out to say this, governments are going to ban Bitcoin should it become material. And there's a couple of things that I actually agree with and one I don't. In conjunction with that, Raul Powell from Real Vision and ex Goldman Sachs VP states, here's what will happen if the US tries to ban Bitcoin and he uses a great analogy of gold. Also for all my European viewers, let's talk about Plutus. I don't know much about it and I'm not recommending it right now. However, it allows you to earn 3% in the Pluton token. It's a decentralized exchange for your fiat to cryptocurrency, and you get to control your own private keys. And lastly, just real quick, go over the uh, Dan Teaches Crypto free website. I made a couple of upgrades and some changes. So we'll go over all that, but first take a look at what's going on in the markets. So today, it is Sunday, November 15th. It is 10 a.m. Trying to get this done so I can go out with the family to Galveston, go soak up a little ocean time. And uh, let's see what we got today. So Bitcoin is above 16,000. Congratulations, we did it on a Sunday, which is crazy because usually on Sundays you start to see some uh, pretty big to mild dips, but uh, hey, here we are, all above 16, we'll take it. Up 0.48% for the week at uh, 300 billion almost market cap, looking good. Ethereum, 456, eh, not bad. Uh, Tether's Tether, 17 billion. XRP up on a little tear, 27 cents. Chainlink down at half a point, what are you gonna do? Uh, but in that, in that fifth spot, so not too bad. It's really kind of pulled away from the market. And uh, Chainlink is at 4.9 billion, Bitcoin Cash at 4.55. And also, I believe Bitcoin Cash has a uh, hard fork. So let's see how that works out between Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin ABC. I think Bitcoin Cash is going to be the primary chain and the other one's going to die off, but I could be wrong. Polkadot's up a percent, $4 and almost 4 dollars so well, not bad. Uh, Bitcoin SV down a point and a half, Monero 1.2 up, 1.4 for, tr hey, Tron, watch out. And eh, what else we got? Anything good? Cosmos 0.5, wow. Uniswap above $4, everybody's in profit. Congratulations to all Uniswap holders. Well, maybe not everybody, I think it's gone about $4, but that was the original price. I'm pretty happy, never sold, never will sell, like what they did with the community. Ave on a huge tear up in the top 30, 52% for the week, 8.3% for a 24 hour time frame, And it's one of the uh, big DeFi contenders. I like it. I'm going to invest into it. What else we got? Ooh, 7% up for synthetics. That is a wild one. Synthetics, it varies wildly. I can't get into that, even though it looks pretty decent. You're in finance up again, eh, whatever. Compound and Uniswap. Something going on with the governance token. Looks like they're gonna be one of the big players. So they're up 14 and a half, 37% for the week. We'll see how that works out. But uh, Compound's the one I'm really looking into, but I uh, just haven't pulled the trigger because gotta do more research. All right, that's what's going on. Let's take a look at what's going on with today. So first up, this is pretty cool. Uh, already, PayPal reaches 85% of Binance US volume. And uh, this was kind of uh, impressive. I I thought it would take off. I just didn't think it was gonna take off like this. So what's going on here? So at 25 million American users, cause right now PayPal's open this up to all American users. They will start to go uh, off into other countries in Q1 2021. So watch out for that. But uh, American users on PayPal are closing in on Binance US trading volume within a month since launching crypto. And again, it hasn't even been a month. It's having been a couple weeks. So yesterday, uh, PayPal lifted the wait list period, making crypto available to all eligible US customers. The payment giant partnered with Paxos for the initiative. And why is that important? Well, it's important because we can see what kind of volume they're doing because the daily volume on the Paxos trading service iBit exchange has risen from less than 5 million in October to nearly 25 million on November 13th, just two days ago. I would be impressed to see what it is after this weekend because it should probably go way up again. So in comparison though, just so you know, the 24 hour volume on Bi Bitcoin US, I think they mean Binance US, uh, is close to 30 million. Um, daily trading volume on other US-based exchanges like Kraken and Coinbase Pro 
is greater than 500 million. So, I mean, there's still a long way to go, but really, if you think about it, they opened this up to about 10% of their users uh, for the first week, week and a half. And then there was so much demand to be on the wait list. They just said, forget it. Let's just open the floodgates and let it go. And uh, they did. And over a couple, couple of days, uh, they've hit 25 million uh, as far as trading volume. So what do you think will happen the next week, month, Six months, a year, I can only see good things. And again, I know people don't like this whole thing about, uh, well, it's you know you have to control your own keys and you've got to do this, you got to do that. But look, some people don't want to do that. Some people don't have the time, don't want to even learn about it, just feel like, hey, Bitcoin's a good investment, I'm going to get into that. Let them do it and then just sit back and be like, I'll control my keys, you don't have to, and that's fine. So to me, it's the more people in here, the better. I'm all on board for it. So speaking of which, let's just jump around for a second. Um, that's the reason why I created uh, Dan Teaches Crypto. It's a 100% free website, simplified everything, pretty uh, easy to learn, and uh, I just make it as simple as I possibly can. So I did four updates, and one of the things I want to talk about real quick is when you log in on the on the site itself, there was an issue with people with after they log in and they're already logged in, they have issues with finding how to get back. So when I come back and I try to log in again, we'll have this screen. They're like, well, "Where do I go? I understand." So I added in two things. First of all, if you just go to members area, you go right back to members area. Second of all, I put this in uh, members area up at the top so you don't get confused. And also I put it in to the actual intro video. So if you're unsure about how to get back, that's the way to get back. Second and third thing is I added two more videos. And the first one, if we go to the basics module, I'm gonna click on that. Actually, I guess I did five things. I, I, I flipped a couple of things around. I put what's blockchain, DLT, and Bitcoin. I think that's when, when people are coming into this space, I think they need to know exactly what that is and why it's important to control your own keys and the whole decentralization and censorship resistance and all those things. So I put that up as the very first one. And then scrolling down, I put the buying your first crypto asset fourth. And then lastly, because I keep getting this question a lot, which is, hey, doesn't China control all the, the mining pools, which means they can shut down Bitcoin. So I'm not going to invest in Bitcoin. And I just, it's a four minute video and I explain why that's not true. And this just isn't me talking. This is from me listening to a bunch of miners out there who told me that I didn't know what I was talking about. And that's why I made this video. Which is true. I mean, I mean, no one's perfect, right? I mean, we have to admit our faults and go, hey, I wasn't right on that one, but I learned some things. So here's what we got. Also on top of this video, let me go back to the home page and go down to how do I. And scroll to the very bottom. I think this is the fourth video I added in, which is how do I organize and prepare my crypto asset taxes? This is mostly for US-based citizens. I go over why wash trading is uh, legal in cryptocurrency and also what is and what is not a taxable event on taxes. Also how to organize and prepare your crypto asset taxes for later on. This is just something to think about in the future. And it's actually a good thing to know about. And then as always, there's just a little quick uh, Q&A to the, to the right. So to make sure that you're tracking and the answers are always there. Uh, and then it also has uh, timestamps, the video, so you can make sure you're correct. And lastly, let me go back to the homepage. Let me scroll down to investing. Let me scroll down to my crypto asset portfolio and storage. So in here, I talk about what different types of assets I have invested into. And also I talk about where I store it. And one of the places I store my crypto, the majority is on a nano ledger, but I had 30% on the Celsius uh, network. And with what has been going on with Celsius, uh, especially with what happened with their website and their app, where it was down for 36 to 48 hours because of that DNS propagation, I see that as, as a flub. Again, nobody's perfect, but it made me really step back and go, should I really have this much of a percentage on Celsius network? And after also doing uh, that post about cred, it got me a little bit spooked. So I'm going to take back, instead of having 30%, I'm going to go down to 5 to 10%. And that is what I will leave on the Celsius network for now. Now, as time goes on and things start to get more smooth and everything works itself out, then sure, I'll add some things in. But for right now, uh, I have to look out for the best interest of me and my family. And uh, I think that what is most prudent is not to have a third of my entire portfolio on the Celsius network. Now, I still believe in it. I still really like Alex Mashinsky was trying to do. I still think it's it, it's a great thing. It's just that I don't think I should have that much on there. And uh, that's just me being as safe as I can. All right, let's jump into 
the next article. Next up, and this was a good one, one I actually dismissed because I had seen it briefly. Didn't really give it too much thought, but then there was a couple of things that I looked into. I'm like, hmm, this makes a lot of sense. So Bridgewater's Dalio sees governments banning Bitcoin should it become material, or Dalio, excuse me. Ray Dalio, or Dalio maybe, uh, the founder and co-chairman of Bridgewater Associates, the world's largest hedge fund, said that uh, this is what's going to happen. The uh, U.S. government is going to ban Bitcoin. And he had really three points. He says there's a lack of venues that will accept cryptocurrencies for purchase. That's true. Uh, there's you know there's only so many vendors out there that will accept Bitcoin, and uh, it's not really a great uh, medium of exchange, especially when more and more people start using it. See 2017. And then um, on top of that, uh, the actual uh, price uh, to actually uh, to use it gets pretty expensive and then it really slows down. So there's a lot of problems with it. And uh, he states, I, uh, I today can't take my Bitcoin yet and buy things easily with it. Now, you can buy things with it. That's very true. Uh, but as far as like easily for like, you know, just transactions to do things, uh, very difficult. Not very difficult, but like I said, expensive and can get slow, especially as more people try to adopt it. And then he states, uh, Bitcoin and other cryptos are too volatile to be considered an effective store of wealth. That volatility also hurts Bitcoin's use transactionally because vendors won't know how much they're getting uh, Delio said. And this is also a pretty good point because, I mean, we can see swings of crypto in one day, especially Bitcoin. I think, you know, uh, Bitcoin can go up a thousand, two thousand in a day. So if it takes you, let's say that everybody in the United States adopts Bitcoin right now and they try to use that as an actual currency, uh, it would take hours for everything to clear if it clears at all because there's so many people on the network it will go come to a grinding halt remember 2017 it wasn't that many people out there it wasn't like the whole nation was using it or nations and it ground to a halt and it was super expensive it was a real pain so for someone to go well how much is that couch i don't know 500 bucks okay i'm gonna pay for that in bitcoin well they pay for it in bitcoin and then they just lost you know x amount because it goes up so much and the vendor's like hey it's pretty good i got uh, what i thought was 500 and actually uh, you know 1500 so as far as that it's not really that fantastic and he states uh if bitcoin or the cryptos become material the leo predicted governments will outlaw it they'll use whatever teeth they have to enforce that and then to finish up he states i don't think digital currencies will succeed in the way people hope they would and that's true that's also true i don't when I first got into uh, crypto, it was all about Bitcoin being a currency. That's why it's called cryptocurrency, and Bitcoin was the first. And people were using it as a currency uh, before when there wasn't that many people using it, and you could get it for like a dollar to ten dollars. It was very cheap. But now, as things have become, you know, just way more in the stratosphere. I mean, Bitcoin right now today is sixteen grand, so it's kind of hard to use that as a uh, medium of exchange, and people did not see Bitcoin becoming a store of value per se until it became a store of value. And I think it, it, is, a, it is a good store of value, especially if you're in, like, again, uh, third world country trying to escape a, a regime and you have gold on you, they're going to take your gold. If the government doesn't take it, then people who are in a worse position than you will definitely take your gold. So good luck getting away from that. If you have Bitcoin, all you got to do is remember 12 uh, seed phrases or seed words and uh, you're out of there. So as far as like a store of value, <clears throat> it is pretty good. We've seen massive dips, but we've also seen bigger highs. So if you want to have just a value, not as a stable value, then yes, it can be a store of value. Later on, I mean, that store of value could be, if you bought it for a thousand, it could be now worth 10,000 or it could be worth 500 bucks, but it's better than having absolutely nothing. See the gold reference I just talked about. So yeah, I agree in all these things. And then the other thing was about gold or uh, sorry, it was about uh, Bitcoin being banned because remember uh, back in the thirties or like well, specifically April 5th, 1933, uh, FDR said, hey, you can't have gold if you're an American citizen. And they rounded it all up. So it's not like this never happened before. It happened. It happened in the United States, land of the free, home of the brave. So it is a concerning thing. And then I took a look at this article, which was Raul Powell. If you don't know Raul Powell, he is the uh, co-founder or founder of uh, Real Vision. He was also a VP of operations over at Goldman Sachs. And he states, this is what's going to happen if uh, America does do that. And it was a pretty well thought out answer. And he states, uh, or it states, while many use Franklin FDR's attempt to forbid the hoarding of gold, uh, gold bullion and gold certificates in 33, 
as a precedent of the potential banning of Bitcoin, Powell notes that the effort completely backfired and resulted in people finding other ways to get gold. He states, the SDF, this FDR thing comes up a lot. It was only the U.S. that tried to ban it, and the gold price went up exponentially, and it didn't work. So everybody else will use gold. So there's exactly the example I'm using. If you ban one group from using gold, guess what? Switzerland and other countries exploded the use because the U.S. citizens and others uh, use Switzerland. And in this day and age, when it's much more easier than to, to go from country to country to get different things, uh, this is in the 30s, mind you. So uh, imagine how that worked out with gold. Well, uh, it totally reversed itself, and now people can hold gold, and uh, the price did go up uh, pretty pretty uh, exponentially. So what do you think is going to happen if they try to ban Bitcoin? Well, they'll ban Bitcoin, and that could be that could happen. That's just the uh, you know the U.S. side. Well, uh, they didn't ban it on a global scale, but let's just say that you did, which is a pretty good point. He says, could the IMF try on a global scale to ban it? Well, sure, but there's always going to be some countries who are like, you know what, I'll use it. And he gives the example here of Russia. So again, right now, there's different countries trying to use Bitcoin and cryptocurrency to get around sanctions. So if America bans it, like, pff, great, thanks for thanks, suckers. So we're going to just use this cryptocurrency that is borderless permissionless and we're gonna be able to use it all over the world to get past these sanctions so thanks a lot we appreciate it and then it goes on to state that not only will governments have a tough time banning bitcoin pal says but they'll probably even be forced to start adding it to their own reserves as fiat currencies around the world continue to face devaluation and this is one of those arguments that i hear a lot and a lot a lot because i'm like well i don't think that's actually going to happen but when you put it like this, I'm like, well, I guess I could kind of see it. And if that does happen, when, when countries actually have to use Bitcoin in their reserves, not as like the total reserve, but just a you know a fraction of it, you know, one to three uh, percent in, in their treasury as the reserve, what would that do for the price? If you have that, all the different investors would say, hey, you know, we should put two to three percent in Bitcoin. And then, I mean, pensions and funding, I mean, it would just explode the price. And that is potentially where it could go. And to finish up, he states, uh, if you are Argentinian and you've had endless currency devaluations and you happen to go through an economic boom, well, what happens if you started accumulating Bitcoin in your reserve? Uh, does this make your currency more valuable? Does it make it harder? Yes, yes, and yes. So it's an interesting prospect to think about if they do ban, but it's just like pushing against the balloon. When you push too hard, it kind of makes this little vacuum and then it kind of starts to expand into other areas. So I think the you know, this thing that we're talking about here, it could be potentially uh, enormous, even more enormous than what I even think. So let me know what you think of the comments section. Let's move on to our last piece. So next up, this is Plutus. Um, and Plutus, they contacted me via email, like I get a lot of different emails from a lot of different vendors and such. And they wanted me to promote their product. And I said, I don't know anything about your product, so I can't promote you. And they said, fair enough. And uh, just so you know that if I get any kind of uh, compensation from any type of organization, that I have to disclose it legally. So there have been two so far that have been a paid promotion on my channel. CryptoTrader.tax, because I believe everybody has to do taxes, especially in the United States, just how it is. And you don't want to go through an audit like I did, so that's why I promoted them. And then also for uh, iTrust, because I believe that everybody needs an IRA. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people. I do, and I think a lot of my subscribers do. So uh, I talk about them a lot, actually both of them a lot. And with Plutus, I don't really know anything about them, but there was a couple things that stood out. And first of all, it was that they're for only in the EU. So all my European viewers, which I tend to leave out, I must admit, because like when I talk about IRAs and I talk about, you know, uh, the taxes and things like that, these companies are mostly for Americans, Canada, a little bit here and there. So when they said, oh, we're only for the EU, I'm like, well, it's good for my, you know, European viewers. I don't, you know, really just, you know, blank out on you guys. It's just that uh, different things don't come around my way too much. So I was like, well, that's good. And the second thing that was pretty interesting is that it's a decentralized exchange. Uh, you can exchange your cryptocurrency for fiat and you're actually in control of your private keys. Again, I don't know anything about it. So I'm just asking you who are listening to this video right now just to give me feedback. I put it on my uh, exchange and wallet fees and I will link it in the description, but um, I'm just evaluating it and I have nothing else to say about it right now. Again, I can't talk about anything until I know enough about it. The problem is that it's for European Union residents or citizens only, so I can't even touch it. But I thought it was a pretty cool idea and uh, I'm just looking for feedback. So just put that in the comment section if you have any type of um, information on that and there was a pretty good there's a pretty cool video uh on the website i'll link it there you can check it out but again 
pretty interesting. Um, centralized exchange, fiat to cryptocurrency, you control your own private keys, you get 3% back in their Pluton, and also for different rewards for different vendors. So I'm like, well, I mean, makes sense, I guess, but um, you never know in this in this uh, space, right? One thing that I did like also is that they've been around since 2015. So that's, uh, I mean, in crypto world, that's like an eternity. So we'll see. All right, so that's it. So again, don't forget about uh, Dan Teaser's Crypto. The link is in the description. It's very almost at the very top right after I talk about the uh, time snippets and it's under the essentials, so check that out. And then also, I just want to give a shout out to everybody who has signed up for Digital Asset News, the YouTube channel, and uh, just do random shout outs. So uh, here we go. Dubnet, Keith Knauer, Nauer, I think I said it. Alice V, Ron Drake, Michael Donath, Jay Sun, Jesse Kirkland, P Dub, Sebastian, John Rizzo, Melissa Davis, Eli Karchoff, and Patrick May. So everybody, thanks so much uh, for signing up for here and also at the website. For the website, uh, we the first couple days we had a thousand members sign up, and then we're on our way to two thousand already. So really appreciate it. If you like these types of videos and you want to check them out, there's gonna be two months gonna pop up in your left and right. YouTube does their magic, and that's it. So. Uh, uh, check those out when you have time. Thanks so much for watching. See you on the next one.